Hello and welcome back to my channel. This is the Mind and Muse Crafts channel and I am Caroline, your host, and I am coming to you this time around from my son's home in Huntsville, Alabama, where I have been visiting frequently over the past two years to help take care of a very premature grandson that was born to us. Well, two years back. <laughs> so, thank you for joining me today. short conversation to carry on with you today a little bit maybe shorter than usual because of the fact that I am traveling and as I have said over and over again when I travel I usually don't I travel light so I didn't bring a lot of yarn and so I wasn't able to begin a lot of projects but the important thing is that with the yarn that I did bring I have projects all set out for them and I think I think it's going to go well. So let's start out. As usual, I begin with walking the talk where I try and share with you some of the ways that I use handmade items. On this occasion, I am wearing a well, I'm going to say that it's a crochet top, but it is not made by me and it is a commercially made crochet top. The reason that I am sharing it with you, it actually belongs to my daughter-in-law. The reason that I'm sharing it is because it's always been a top that I have wanted to make, except for the fact that I have, I, I really don't find making shapes and joining them together user-friendly. So it's kind of like turns me off. I much prefer to create a design by working back and forth and just watching in the magic of stitches and knots watch the symbols or the shapes appear but i really have always liked the top and i've always wanted to imitate it and so i asked her if she would let me borrow it so i could share it with you if you know of any pattern that is very similar to this you can let me know and I'll give it a look. I'll give it a look. And accompanying this crochet top, I do have handmade earrings that were made by me um, a while back. It is not my personal pattern, but it is a Tunisian crochet leaf pattern that is very much available on Pinterest or if you do a Google search and Tunisian crochet leaf earrings it, it'll show up and I've always liked the way these turned out and the way that they look so um so yeah I'm not actually wearing everything made by me but I've got a made by me wannabe something that I would like to make and I would always pair it with my own earrings they're they're very these crochet earrings are very light so it's very easy to always have them on it, they don't bother you they they aren't heavy on the ears and they can be worn by almost anyone and also on the down on the another bright side they are very easy to crochet up so that's my walk in the talk for today and i think that i will just get on with my projects which is sitting over there. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go get them. Back. 
Okay, so as I mentioned on my last episode, I think it's only been one. Let's see. Today is June the 30th. So, um, yes, I definitely talked about it on my last podcast. I don't know if I have go further back, but I have been sharing with you my experience or my desire or the idea that I had to participate in the Summer of Romance Cal that is hosted by my daughter, Clarissa Beth, and a very good friend, Claudia Carpenter of the Crochet Lunar, the Crochet Luna podcast. And so I think it's been five years or more that they've been hosting this Cal every summer. And I see it as an opportunity to be able to experience other types of literature. So this year's topic was um, sci-fi romance. And so the idea was that you would choose either a movie or a series or a novel or art maybe, something to do with sci-fi. And in addition to being about sci-fi, it had to include the idea of romance, uh, some romantic couple. And I shared with you a while back that I chose to read what is called the Vor Korsigan Saga, which is a series of, I believe, 16 books written by Louise McMaster Bujold. And so I am currently on, well, the, the order of the books, you know, all depends on whether you're going by publication order or whether you're going by the internal chronological order of the stories and I've been trying to read it by the internal chronological time frame of the stories timeline of the stories so I am what well, I'm just going to say I am on book seven and um, for the most part I have found I think six of those seven or five of the six depending which book I'm on on audible free of charge I've only had to use one credit to pay for one of the books. And it might have been that I didn't look for it hard enough, but I I was really into the saga, and so I wanted to continue reading it. I usually enjoy um, listening to the audio, the audio book, number one, while I walk in the morning. Here it is, I mean, the sun has not risen, but it is clear enough out to walk around 5.30 in the morning. That's the time that I go out because my daughter-in-law starts work at seven and so I need to be back by then. And um, so while I walk for my one hour and 15 minutes and I usually walk about three miles while I'm listening to audiobooks. And it's a very good way to read, read books. And you know, you can really, as I said, I've read already using Audible, the six or seven books of this saga. So the, in chronological order, the first book is titled Shards of Honor. And in this book, we have a, I don't think she was a captain at the beginning of the novel, but she becomes a, a captain throughout. So I'm gonna call her Captain Cordelia Naismith. And her encounter on a planet with Lord Errol Vorkorsigan. And um, it's, the whole book is about how they help each other out of a rough situation and end up obviously falling for each other. But the idea of the romantic encounters that you might get from the like for example, last year's historical romance novels. Well, that that doesn't occur that way. It's a very different type of of um, romance. Uh, the romantic gestures of Lord Lord Corsigan are quite distinct from maybe other romantic gestures that you have read about in other novels. So, if you're really into rom juicy romantic novels, this is not the type of romance that's going on here. The, the, I still think that the emphasis 
is the sci-fi the idea that they're on a different planet and they live on different planets and the different types of technology that are available now and the different ways that civilization has prospered or evolved on different planets that they mention. And so the sci-fi element is there. And um, I think the romance takes like a second um, priority is not the first priority, but that's okay because that was the idea, I guess, of reading a science, a sci-fi romance novel. You want the sci-fi to be maybe the number one. Now, this is not a new series. This dates, dates back to 1989, and so it's been a while since all the books were published. I think the last one might have been maybe 2014. Um or close to that. So it's not a current saga that, you know, has everybody going wild. But I think it was at its time when these books were being published, I do think it was well received. I mean, all the books were well received. And I have to say for myself that I really liked them. I have really liked them to the extent that, okay, I want to read another, I want to read another, I want to read another. The, um, I guess my only complaint would be that this first couple that starts the whole romance in the saga um, really fall into the background as the saga continues. And I, yeah, I lamented that a little bit because, you know, I... I I kind of liked the character development and the relationship between the two characters. So, yeah, but, you know, there's enough going on in the new books and there's still a connection between each book and the one prior to it. So that, um, I mean, especially if you read it in this recommended internal chronological order, there's there's enough there for you to to keep you entertained, to keep you excited and to keep you coming back for more. So um, I'll share with you the project that I worked on for the Summer of Romance Cal for 2023. Now I was hoping to get to work on more than one project, but as it is, I am traveling and that's never easy to accomplish if you don't want to accumulate yarn in everybody's home, which, which I obviously I don't want to. So the pattern that I chose to represent my couple was called the Mini Galaxy of Change and that's by Frank O. Randall and it is a free pattern. He has a paid for pattern which is the Complete Galaxy of Change. The Complete Galaxy of Change is must be gigantic and you'll understand when I show you what I've done because it is I think it is designed to be a rug. So um, yeah you can work it up with a pretty large yarn and a pretty large hook and um, I think it would look beautiful. I kind of wish that I worked it up as a rug but as a matter of not going into a lot of expenses I was just using what I had at home. In addition I knew that I would need to take this yarn with me so I wanted a yarn that didn't occupy as much as, as too much space and so I chose to do it more as a wall hanging, but I really, I really wish I had done it as a, um, a floor mat. It's, I think it would look really nice. So I don't know if it looks to you like the um, imitation of a galaxy, but it does look like the mat. I'm going to put up here after I edit a photo of an image maybe that you could example for example find on Pinterest of a of the galaxy and maybe you would you can see where I see the resemblance of all the dark blues the black and the white and the little holes that make it seem like light is coming through your design so I found it very attractive the only thing I wanted to change about it was that I wanted to include um, one row or two of color that would represent Cordelia and another row or two of color of a color that would represent 
Arrow Board Course again. And so this is how I did it. Basically, I was following the pattern and I have to say that there were many moments where I lost. I just ended the row when I didn't have the right row count because the next row that I was doing, I wasn't having the stitches where I needed them, but it all worked out, I think. And um, let's see. This is my finished project. Now, Cordelia was said to have red hair. And as I read online, mm, we, incorrectly maybe call redheads redheads because most of the redheads have orange hair and not red so i preferred to put the an orange stripe in it and then way way down here you'll see there's like a silver a silver row um basically the pattern starts white a uh, darker blue a darker blue a darker blue a darker blue going to black and then it repeats that so in between instead of continue with the color that was needed i added the color that i wanted so that silver shouldn't be there but it is there because it represents um workhorse again is in addition to being a military um professional let's say he is also a lord so he's also part of the aristocracy of the planet where he lives and each of the houses of the lords have livery colors and his color was silver and brown now i didn't want to put the brown in it i don't think it would look that bad actually but i didn't bring it with me so i didn't do it and i also wasn't able to complete it because i left the black at home so you see it's got black here i don't know i just forgot to put that a ball of black yarn in the stash that i was bringing so maybe i'll finish it when i get home i don't know or maybe i'll just leave it like that i i personally really do like the black and i think i mean i don't i've never been to outer space but i do believe that um it is stressed enough in the many images that we see that it's like um, very dark. Midnight blue, very dark blues, and even black. And one of the things that is mentioned continuously in this saga are the existence of wormholes and how the different armies of the different planets travel through wormholes to reach more quickly another side of the galaxy where they are having some encounter some problem or they need to offer help or whatever the reason is but wormholes are mentioned constantly so this has been steam blocked right now it has been steam blocked and all, most of the yarns are Aunt Lydia's number three or Omega number five. This uh, one exception is this blue, dark blue line that you see here. At that point, I didn't have a dark blue line in, in Aunt Lydia's, if you don't know, is 100% mercerized cotton. I didn't have that, and so I used a fingering rate wool. I used a fingering white wool, but then I found it to, I, I wanted to do it all in cotton. So I, that I did purchase. I did go out and get a darker, actually, actually I got these two darks of blue, one darker and one even darker looking almost black. And then I was supposed to have the black on the end that like, as I said, I just forgot to put in the bag that I was bringing me with, I was bringing with me. So um maybe i'll do it when i get back home my intention was that to present this to you today i would put it on a hula hoop and then have that hula hoop um, hung on the wall somewhere maybe of the room where i usually stay because it goes very well there's a lot of uh, blue accents around here but um the hula hoop that my grandson had that he never wanted to use they bought it for physical therapy and he was never into using that well, that hula hoop was actually too small. So I need to either get a larger one or I'm thinking about when I get back home, maybe I'll take a couple of hangers, several hangers and stretch them out and 
put them into the form of a circle that I can then crochet the points of this star onto that and put that on the wall. I've thought about maybe encasing it in a frame um, without glass maybe. But, um, you know, I don't know where you live, but where I live, frames are particularly expensive. And so I don't know if I want to do that, but I'll find a way. I do want it on the wall, but you can see how large this is. Uh, I don't actually know if I measured. I think it's 25 inches in diameter. So that would be like from one of these points to one of these points. There are larger points because there are smaller points. And so I would actually prefer putting it onto some sort of outer rim frame only so that when you hang it, you could actually see light coming through it. And um, so, yeah, so that's pretty big, 25 inches in diameter. And this is all with number three yarn or number 10 hail double because I didn't, and really, it really doesn't come in that many colors of the same, like of the same tone. She really doesn't do that. So um, I used uh, different brands like Omega that usually has number five, which is a bit comparative to number three. So I didn't use that one double, but the number 10, I did use double. It's never exact, but it worked well enough, I think. So what do you think? I am really happy with that. I did show it to my daughter-in-law and she did not like the orange line. She didn't like the orange line there, but I mean, you have to understand the purpose. The purpose is that every time I look at this, I will remember the romance novels that I read. And so if it didn't have something that distinctively represented my couple, I mean, the idea of this just being a galaxy, I think it's representative enough. But in addition to that, I wanted a little bit more personalized. So, so yeah, I went with the change of colors. I didn't want to do it red for red hair because I thought it would look too 4th of July. By the way, this is the, well, I guess we consider it the 4th of July weekend here in the States because of the fact that the 4th of July is on a Tuesday. So most people will be celebrating over the weekend because they'll probably work either Monday or, and you know, I don't know, <laughs> I'm just saying that. I'm saying that out of experience because we are, we'll be traveling to Pennsylvania tomorrow to spend the weekend with a friend, some friends of my husband and his wife. And so I guess I'm thinking that maybe a lot of people will do that. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't want because it's okay to look like the 4th of July on the 4th of July, but not all year round. So I'm very happy with my choice. I'm very happy with my representation. I'm very happy that I'm going to be able to put this on the wall and remember that saga as I read it. Because there are a lot of, there are a lot of neat moments and, and there's a lot of um, character development and, hum and interactions between the characters that I really like. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I won't have time to make a second one, but I really want to because in the different novels that belong to the saga series, um, different romances occur. And I would have liked to represent a second romance that really has touched my heart all through the saga. But um, I won't have time because I, I get back after. Do I get back after? No, I will have time because I think the cow, the summer romance cow, ends on the 13th of August, maybe, don't take my word for it, but more or less somewhere 12, 13, around there. So yeah, I might have time to get back and still do one more thing. So I should probably start thinking about that. But anyway, I'm happy with that. And I hope that you all have enjoyed. Um, I haven't said much about what I have read because I don't know, I, I thought maybe somebody, some of you might have Audible, or I think there was one of the books in this series that was available, for example, on YouTube as an audio book, and it was for free, obviously, so that you really don't have to read all of the books to get the story. Each of these books is an independent story, but so I didn't really want to give too much of it away. But um, if you ever want to sit and talk about it and chat about it, just let me know. 
Okay, so that was my Summer Romance Cal 2023 project. I believe that I have finished it. And um, I'm really, really, I'll be really, really happy to put it up um, once I've gotten the final structure of how I am going to try and hang it for you, for me, <laughs> for us. <laughs> okay, so that's my only finished object that I want to share with you today. But I do have a couple, I have a whip and some plans that I would like to share with you if that's okay. Pressing on with projects, I want to share, well, the next two projects are actually projects that I never planned anywhere along the line this year because they, um, well, one of them is a sister pattern to a pattern that already exists. And the other one is, um, I believe it's a new pattern that was published this summer. So I'm gonna talk first about the whip. The whip is called the Secret Garden Top and it can also be made as a dress. Let me see. So this is the top. It is a pattern, a design by Nomad Stitches and the design is very flexible. You can see here, what, what we're seeing here is the back. And one version has a very low back, another version has a high back, and a third version has a complete dress. And I think the complete dress is what most called my attention. This is not the best. I am picture of the dress, but my idea was something that could be like a beach beach cover up, a, a beach um a bathing suit cover up. And so that really attracted me. But I know I can't make it because um I don't have enough yarn. What happened was that I received from Claudia of Claudia of the Sunbird Crochet podcast. Um she is also on Instagram. And so she has been hosting a whole year, Cal, that has to do with freeform crochet. And I've been in and out of her hashtag on Instagram. And she chose prizes a while back, just like maybe for the end of, a, of the month or something like that. And, and I won, so she sent me this yarn it's a graduated, graduates from yellow to like a gold color and then starts with the greens. And it is basically, I believe, cotton acrylic, but it's got three strands of a very, very thin yarn held together. They're, they've only been wound up together. They're not plied or anything. And so that's what I've been using. This pattern requires fingering weight, a cotton or a cotton blend. And so, but I'm going to use this and see what happens. At the moment, I've been using a 3.25 millimeter hook. The recommended is a three, but I didn't, I didn't have a three with me. And I was getting very close to the gauge, even though I'm using a thinner yarn with a 3.25. So I'm going to go with that. And I am also making the size three. So, I had to get up there because obviously I didn't bring it with me. This is what I have up to now. Okay, Up to now I have the top, the maybe the yoke front, and the back. And so these are made in four sections. Uh, no, three sections. The whole front and each of the back is made separately. You can already see how the color of my yarn is changing there. And now that it has been joined, I will begin working in the round all the way down. And I am just going to continue working in. Uh, at the beginning, it is the same pattern here that is used for the top. 
uh, I'm gonna say maybe for about two or three inches and then once you hit the high waist then you begin with a lace pattern a lacy pattern and I don't know how many of those complete lacy patterns I'm going to get but this has 750 meters maybe 820 yards or something like that so whatever that gets me that's where I'm going <laughs> so so yes we'll see how this goes over the next couple of weeks and how far I can get with it using that yarn because obviously there's no way that I can get any more of that yarn because it came all the way from Cologne, Germany. And so, um, and I don't know, I've been looking into maybe trying to get something that matches this darker color here. I don't know. We'll see what happens if I, if I can find a, a cotton blend in fingering weight that, um, or lace weight that I can hold double that matches this so that I can finish it. But we'll see how far I go. I don't know. I think that at least I will be able to get a blouse out of it because this is sleeveless. There are, um, there's an edging around the whole neckline front and back. And I also believe around the underarm or, or the armhole, but for the most part, that's it. So, so there's no sleeve or anything that will take up more of my yarn. It's just going around and around and around in the two patterns on, until you're done. And so, well, there are recommendations for changing a hook size when you reach, for example, your waist so that um, the blouse extends a little bit outward without having to change your yarn or anything. But I don't really have any other <laughs> any other crochet hook here. I only have that one because I had left it here the last time. So I thought I had a 3.5. I thought I had other sizes with me, but I actually don't. So we'll see what happens along the way. We'll see. So that is the Secret Garden Top by Nomad Stitches. And um, it is a paid for pattern. Uh, I think she, yeah, I know it, she was promoting it recently, but I don't know if it's a recent design or if she's just re-promoting something she's already made. But I saw the promotion recently and thinking about that yarn, I decided that I was going to get it. So the third item that I want to share with you is has not is not yet a whip. It is right now simply something that's on my radar. Because Sandra of Nomad Stitches is also hosting a cow. And it's called the Versuvius Cow. And it runs from July 1st to July 31st. So that's starting tomorrow. It is a, let me read you her description here because no words of mine will be better than hers. It is a sister pattern to the Etna tea, if you have made that one, which um, make up a collection inspired by beautiful Italian landscapes and the roughness of the terrain and the volcanic, the volcanic majesties that their namesakes are. Uh, Versuvius is made top down. It has a drop shoulder construction and has perfectly fitted shoulders to eliminate any excess fabric around the underarms. The tee features a textured and airy stitch, which is perfect for summer garments, a wide oversized fit and a split high low hem, all finished with an elegant edging. So many of those things can be adapted, can be changed. There are like, you can make it longer, for example, you can not do the high low hem or not do the split hem if you don't want to. 
You do not have to make it as oversized if you simply just choose a smaller size, etc. So it, even though um, all of these details may or may not attract you, it seems to be very versatile. So yeah, I'm going with that. There, I am trying to, maybe if I do it like that, it would be better. Uh, let me show you there the shoulder pattern that she is very proud of. It's one of the things that she talks most about when she describes this pattern. And here's the schedule. It starts July 1st, and then from the 1st to the 9th, we're supposed to work on the back. From the 10th to the 16th, the top front and start the body. From the 17th to the 23rd, finish the body and do the bottom front. On the 22nd, she will provide a master class on slip stitch and faux eye cord edging. And that just sounds like something very interesting. And then from the 24th to the 31st, um, she has timed it so that we're working on the bottom back and the sleeves. And you get the pattern free online on her blog, nomadstitches.com. Or if you decide to join the cow, which is just a registering your email on her website, then she is giving you the pattern for 50% off, I believe until the cow starts tomorrow. So you still have maybe a couple of hours. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, by the time this is up, maybe that opportunity has passed. Hopefully you will have heard of it. And she also has some live events. They're obviously not mandatory, but it's just, um, she's got a starting chain party tomorrow from five to six. She's got the master class that you can participate in. And there are also prizes available. Um, seven balls of Suave from Pasquale, um, a Limerence kit from Expressions Fiber Art, gift cards from several dyers, and um, a 10 pack of paint box yarns, $40 US gift card to We Crochet, and maybe some others that she will get later on and hasn't been able to mention on her, um, I'm, I'm reading this from her blog, directly from her blog. So, um, there you go. It requires a fingering weight yarn. And um, she uses Pasquale Suave, which, uh, which is 100% organic cotton yarn, and that is lighter, that is as light as a feather. And uh, you can look up the, um, you can look up the details of that. Um, And she also gives you a very long list of alternative yarns that you could use because I believe this Pasquale yarn was on sale um, last week. It had a discount, maybe 20% or something like that, but I still found it pretty, pretty costly. So you see, it's out of the way today. I am going to be using this yarn which is a yarn that Car Clarissa Beth brought back to me from Japan. Now I don't, I can't read Japan. Well, I can't read it, I can't, I can't speak it, I can't understand it in any way. But I think this is 50% cotton and 50% acrylic or polyester, only because I see a 50-50 here. <laughs> And it also says size one, I believe. So fingering. And so Clarice Beth told me that this was a self-striping yarn. So it will be interesting to see how that top works up in this yarn. And I think one, two, I've got 300 grams of this yarn and so um, I'm hoping it will be enough. She says I need approximately 
six or seven skeins for the cropped high-low, and obviously I'll be making it longer, but seven skeins would be, it is very close to this thickness because this is 25 grams also. And it says something like, I don't know what it says, 175 meters? I'm not sure. Totally not sure. So I'm hoping that, yeah, if it's seven, eight, nine, ten, I have enough. So that is a project that I am due to begin tomorrow. So I will be taking some of this yarn with me. Um, I'm saying that, but I don't know because... I'm hoping that it says it uses a 3.5 millimeter hook and I've already said that the only thing I have is a 3.25 so or a 4 so I'll probably go up to a 4 I think I'd rather have it loose and go up I think it'll be something like this this is also uh, very short I have a very high waisted pants on which is the reason why I haven't stolen it from <laughs> my daughter-in-law. But anyway, so this is what I hope to gauge swatch tomorrow. And um, as I think, that's what we're supposed to do. Well, that's what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> so, thank you very much for joining me today. And, um, I mean, I'm just here to try and, and keep you up to date to what I'm doing and not just sort of like disappear every time I, I visit my son and try and help out with the baby. Uh, Lucas is growing fantastically and he has started walking. I think I mm, kind of showed you that the last time that I saw him in Florida, but now he's full on walking. And um, recently he had never worn shoes because, you know, they, they were trying to help him walk in his natural feet first, but now he wants to walk everywhere outside, in the stores, on the airplane, wherever you put him. So I thought it was a good idea that he should at least put some light coverings on his feet so that they can protect them from rocks and dirt and you know all the other things that end up on sidewalks when you're walking so um yes thank you for all of you that are continually asking me he is continuing to grow he will be two years soon two years old soon he is not up to date with his two year old um mates playmates or whatever you want to call them but um, but he is progressing, which is the important thing. So I'm going to just leave it at that. And I hope I have shared with you a couple of ideas that you might want to try and um, try out yourself. The Remember, the Summer Romance Cal is running until August. So you still got lots of time to read a book and join in on that one. And it's been quite fun. And um, this other cowl that I'm showing you is, well, running for a month. Tomorrow, July 1st until the end. So if you've got time in for a new crochet top, then, um, and you've got the yarn, so it's not, it's cost effective. Let's say that I hope, I hope that um, it has interested you. But if not, I'm sure you've got tons of projects that you're working on and that interest you very dearly so that's fine you can in the comments below share that with me if you would like to and tell me a little bit about what you've been up to um you can tell me a little bit about what you will be doing this fourth of july weekend if it's something that you decide to celebrate and um yeah i'll get back to you and in a couple of weeks to show you how i've been progressing on these two makes so until we meet again keep yourself safe Keep yourself happy.
and keep crafting. Bye for now.